This is Comic Geek Speak, episode 104. Welcome to Comic Geek Speak. I'm Brian Deemer. I'm Tasha Deemer. I'm Shane Kelly. I'm Peter Rios. God gave me a gift. I shovel well. I shovel very well. <laughs> and welcome to the show. This episode of Comic Geek Speak is sponsored by Drawer Boxes, the best way to store your comics. These replace all of the short boxes, long boxes, and any other wacky method you have of storing comics, because this is the best way. Uh, they are cardboard boxes that have drawers in them that slide in and out, so as you stack the boxes on top of each other, you never have to heave those ones on top to get at the ones underneath. You just slide out the drawer. Shane, you just got your set up recently, right? Yeah, I just got four, and I got them set up. What I started to do with them is, since I started with the um, the my lights, I figured that I would start transitioning everything in my light in those drawer boxes and then slowly filter everything out as I transfer bags and boards and eventually order more drawer boxes and just keep going so everything gets transferred all simultaneously throughout the room. If I can figure out where to put them in the room first. So to uh, check out some more information and to buy your drawer boxes, go to collectiondrawer.com. That's collectiondrawer.com. Uh, we're pleased to announce that um, in April, it is April, right? My God, I just blanked <laughs> out for a second. Uh, April like 22nd, 23rd, and 24th, I think, right? I yeah. should have done preparation. Don't you have that little convention list I gave you, something floating around somewhere? Somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Or no, April 21st, 22nd, 23rd okay. is uh, the Pittsburgh Comic Con. And we are going to be there. We are we we actually have a booth already. It's S zero six six. For anyone who wants to write that down, I will. I mean, you'll find this later on. But that's our official booth uh, number, and uh, we're going to be helping to promote that show. So uh, for anyone who's not making it to New York, but you live, you know, maybe some of the sh- eh, Chicago's still pretty far to get to Pittsburgh, but like Ohio. Yeah, yeah, Ohio, maybe even Kentucky some Michigan. Kentucky or, you know, like West, West Virginia, Virginia or something. They can come up yeah. for that. So um, we hope to see you in Pittsburgh as well. What about Canada? Is that too far away? It depends. Well, not really. I mean, it's I mean, it's just across the Great Lakes. Super close, but they could still get there. It's still driving distance. Take a ferry across the lake. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, we brought on the show for today Tasha, Tasha Deemer. Um, hello. Hello. Just because we had a, a, Brian gave us the announcement a couple episodes back that she is a mommy to be. And uh, she's glowing. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> How's it feel? Uh, kind of sickening. <laughs> <laughs> Already? Yeah. Yeah. Mm, the last like week. But no, other than that, fine. Cool. I mean, a lot of the, the listeners on the forum were just, you know, there was such an outpouring of congratulations and things like that. Really Freckin' swears were drawn. <laughs> oh, yeah. Did you show her the two freckin' swears? No, no, you have to see this. You didn't even tell me. I forgot. If you go to the freckin' swear uh, <clears throat> uh, section of our site, which is our very own comic strip drawn by our ever loyal listeners, um, they're, the latest ones, I think it's 21 and 22. Yep. Yep. Is. It, the topic is the the announcement that Brian had, and they're really cool and they're really funny, and um, we thank those guys for doing that. I know Brian was saying that a lot of guys on the forum were coming up with names that the babies. Yeah, <laughs> you want to? I like you want to. Dormammu. I don't think so, guys. Uh, <laughs> Madam Xanadu. <laughs> I do. I do really want to say thank you to everyone who has uh, congratulated us. It's amazing. It's like three pages of posts, just everyone saying congratulations. So. That means a lot. Yes, thank you very much. Maybe it'll be Zatanna or Zatara. No, we yeah, have I names for them. Electra. <laughs> Electra they're D. Not, Electro. They're not comic book related. Oh, anymore. come on. Sorry. <laughs> so you're going to try to hit all the conventions with us? As many as I can, yeah. Yeah. I know Brian, I think Brian told you, what is it? Is it at the Mid- Ohio? Mid-Ohio Con. Is right after. Yeah, yeah November. 
but I, I really want to go to San Diego, and hopefully I, I'll be able to fly then. So I'll be um, like seven months then. So <sighs> hopefully, uh, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> see what the doctors say. No, I'm, yeah. no, I'm not going to comment on that. <laughs> Maybe you can drive, it out, drive out with Shane. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I said Shane and I can take the train yeah. better leave now <laughs> yeah, yeah how about yeah, it when they go. what about we could ba- do it Baltimore is <laughs> early September so that's probably pushing it yeah, yeah it dep- depends on how she feels you know yeah Oh, that was a kick. Nope, not going. Right. It's probably safer to be at home. <laughs> Brian, Brian will get a call in the middle be. of the con. You better come home now. That's right. That's not, not too be. far away. Yeah. Oh, no. no. Two and a half hours. Yeah. I can do that. It'll be an hour that day. I hope I don't that's go right. that soon. In the beginning of September, that's, well, that's yeah, true. a couple weeks. Yeah. So. Cool. I don't know. Well, they're all thinking about you out there. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> they were they were requesting video podcasts. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I don't even want to see that. Yeah, <laughs> that didn't bother me. I my when my my wife had a, a C section for Let's both. Let's not kids. talk about that. <laughs> that that didn't bother <laughs> me. Brian <laughs> squirmy. <laughs> I'm nixing that <laughs> conversation right there. I don't know what we're gonna do when it comes to that point. Yeah, I'm like, uh, I gotta have somebody in there with me, and if you don't want to be in there, then I gotta find somebody else. <laughs> yeah, your mom will be in there with you. Yeah. And then just oh, like currently, maybe she'd course. like to be on the other side of it for a change. <laughs> Because he's like, I want to be there, but I'm not going to be able to look at anything. <laughs> I'll be like, looking at your face, and that's it. And he's like, and they better clean that thing off before it gets near me. <laughs> that they do. They do. They ask you if you want to come see it. All you got to say is no. And they go take it away. Maybe we'll have a live remote from inside the uh, <laughs> oh, delivery. I don't think hey, so. Hey, you know what? I will tell you, Brian, if, if it ends up for some reason being a C-section, you have no chance of seeing anything unless you purposely want to because oh. they have her walled off from the rest of the world. Yeah, no, I wouldn't I, I wouldn't be able to. Yeah. Yeah, I, it would be bad. All right. Well, well Congratulations. Thank, Thank you, you for joining us, Tasha. You can yes. return to your okay. yeah. I'm watching activities. A, I'm watching a movie, and I was taken away from it so I could come down here. So. Did, did you put in Corpse Bride or something else? No, Million Dollar Baby. Oh, uh, okay. I like to watch the movies that have been nominated or mm-hmm. yeah. got sure. awards, even though I don't know if they deserve it or not, but <laughs> we'll see. I haven't gotten through this one yet. So. Oh, makes sense. It's the next well. Karate Kid Part 2. Oh, <laughs> well, thank you. Goodbye. All right, uh, I actually have um, a few uh, audio comments about episode 100 that I have neglected to play. So before it gets too far in the past, I want to wanna play those for us. Cool. Hey, guys, this is Tyler Hilton, Zog Returns from the forum. Thanking you for 100 great episodes, and I've got a couple wishes for you for the next 100. Brian, may you always remain unspoiled while waiting for the trade. Kevin, may all your moon nights have a silver lining. Matt, may you never run into the Joker while on a stakeout. Shane, may you slip and fall in a Toys R Us, sue, and settle for free toys for life. And finally, Peter, may some old wizard give you the wealth of Scrooge McDuck, the cool head of the Hulk, the long life of certain members of the All-Star Squadron, the ruthlessness of General Zod, the hair of Alexander Luther, and the DC continuity knowledge of Mark Wade. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. <laughs> that's a good one that's cool yeah. <laughs> I'll take that settlement <laughs> yeah no no kidding huh? yeah no no qualms about that and here's another one hey guys this is uh, Wayne from the Geek Pastor podcast just wanted to wish you guys a uh, happy 100th episode and uh, thank you guys for all the great comic news and discussions uh, you guys are my favorite podcast to listen to and uh, wish you 100 more and beyond so uh Enjoy, have a great show, and uh, I look forward to hearing it. Cool. Cool. Thanks. Yes, we always appreciate all those sentiments like that. Oh, yeah. That's cool. All right, let me find an email here. Anybody read anything since last we met? Oh, yeah, I've, I've been reading a bunch of stuff. I've been reading old stuff. I started the book of the month one. I want to dig into a couple other independent things that I have on the back burner. My my kid, my youngest kid, when I got home from the last time we, we recorded, and I had planned to 
sit down and start book of the month and read through scar tissue and mm-hmm. a couple other things. Yeah, he was awake. <laughs> and that was at like 10 o'clock. And he was up till about midnight. So I didn't get anything done. <laughs> I was so ticked. See what you have to look forward to. <laughs> yeah. And that was very unusual. He's just had, He's been in a funk the last week about that. He doesn't want to sleep. That's why they make duct tape in closets. <laughs> you know. I told Carly, just leave him go. She's like, I can't. He was really hysterical there after a while. <laughs> That's one of those things where I think I'll be good at that because I'm fairly ruthless and impatient when it comes to stuff like that. So I don't care if it's my kid and he's screaming his head off. Just shut the door and I'll, I'll put I'll put earplugs in and go downstairs. Like <laughs> it's it's really it's honest to God. You start to learn their cries. You really do. There's there's no shit there. And I can tell if he's hysterical that he's not going to calm down. And I can tell if he's hysterical and you just got to give it 30, 40 seconds and he'll shut up and go to sleep. And and that's no mean intent. Um, but I can just tell if he's hysterical in a certain way, a certain twinge in his voice, man, I know I got to go get him because there's nothing going to do except me getting him and holding him or giving him to Carlene and she'll fall asleep with him. But otherwise, he'll calm down. And, and you really you really do get to learn that. Because my cousin's kid was a little Satan child and... <laughs> He would just like throw tantrums and stuff, and everyone would coddle him, and it didn't help. It just made it worse, you know. Oh, yeah. And so there was one time at Christmas I was so pissed, so I, I had to literally sit on him. And I mean, he, you know, he was like nine years old or eight years old or something. He was big enough or something. I had to freaking like sit on him, and it was like forty minutes, and I was just like, "I'm not getting up. I am not letting you win, you little punk. I hate you." <laughs> and I just, and I just, I sat there and I just made him. I just made him sit still and he was yelling and trying to throw his body around and I just I was like I'm stone baby I don't care how long this takes I am not letting you win so like something like that like my eh, go to bed and cry all you want you punk you know I'm going downstairs and reading my comic books (laughs) here's an email from Charles Noel he says hey guys I've been listening for almost a month now Listening to like two episodes a week. I'm a 16 year old Filipino comic fan with only a handful of comic fans to talk to about comics here in the Philippines, and your podcasts have really been a big help. Having a, a hobby you can't talk about sucks a lot. Now I'm not so lo- now I'm not so lonely anymore. I'm starting to notice though that kids my age don't read comics anymore like they supposedly used to, and it's usually older guys reading them. That's what it looks like here anyway. I wish kids my age would open up to this fascinating hobby. Which brings me to my question. What title would you recommend to a new comic fan? <clears throat> Thanks, guys. I hope you talk more about the JSA and Black Adam. <coughs> wow. Well, that's, like, impossible to answer. Well, for him, right off the bat, Gravity. For for a miniseries, I would, I would recommend that. Um, I would go for... Definitely Marvel Team Up. I was going to say Marvel Team Up. No, that's what I, I was going to yeah. go to that one, too. <coughs> if, you, if you like it, I like Robin. That's a good one because he's still about that same age. Oh, right. Okay. And, and they throw a, a bit of teen angst in there. And what about Batgirl? Then. Has that ba- been any good lately? Because the first 50 issues were pretty damn good. They were good, but it's not... it. I'm a little bit behind on it, but it was not quite the same as Robin. Like, Robin always dealt with his dad, of course, now right. with his dad. Um, and he always had like friends from school or past acquaintances come and go in his books. Um, Batgirl never really did. She's pretty much the Bat Universe characters coming right. in out of her. So it's you could if if you want to. Um, it's not a bad title at all, but it's not quite as teeny. No, but I mean, it might have be a lot of fun for it's, a teen. It is. It is a lot of fun. It's it, especially now with the relationship she's had with Robin. Being in Bloodhaven and stuff, yeah, I that's definitely a good, a good book. Uh, new young readers, um, Runaways, Young Avengers, oh, yeah. Teen Titans. Yeah, Teen Titans. That was the other one I thought of. And if he's digging JSA and and then man, I mean, he can appreciate anything because that's like yeah, the, that's like the flagship title for DC. So you know, to be reading that and enjoying that. Yeah. For a new re- new young reader, I'm yeah. not sure if I if I dump that, but he, he seems to have. But if he's already knowledge. reading it, then yeah. You know, I would definitely seek out some of the better JLA stuff then. I'd even go back and, like, I'd pick up... For for him, I would pick up Justice League A New Beginning. I'd pick up that trade. He'd, he'd probably get all that... All that comedy would be great. 
What about new stuff though? New stuff on the rack, like for for one of his friends, like if he was walking um, in. Other than what we mentioned, maybe uh, Invincible. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't read it myself, but from everything we've heard. How about um, uh, New X Men? Doesn't yeah. that center around? Yeah, the Mark Brooks drawn stuff. Yeah. Yeah, Even maybe, maybe one of the Spider-Man titles. There's got to be one of them. Maybe Friendly Neighborhood. Friendly Neighborhood. That's the one I'd recommend just because of yeah, who's if you, doing it. I mean, yeah. we, Peter and I can't harp on it enough, but if you, if you want to learn about the basics of some of the Marvel Universe characters and you're, and you're not really familiar with it, Marvel Team Up is, yeah. is the go-to book for that. You get little snippets. None of it's overwhelming. Nope. And it all connects into the Marvel Universe at large without feeling like a ton of continuity on your shoulders, even it, though it maybe has the most continuity of any Marvel book right now because it ties everything together in just little tiny ways. It's very subtle, but it's it's good. And, and none of them are forced together. No. It's, it's, it's very it feels very natural. Yeah. You just get a lot of exposure to a lot of different characters that you can then decide who you like and who you don't like. Even mm-hmm. the, the little sleepwalker appearance? I didn't get to that yet. Cause of, oh, is yeah. that in the second... Oh, yeah, maybe it was in a second. Maybe I did read it. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. But I mean, you know, at the time when that first, when that character first came out in that in that series or miniseries or whatever it was, you know, they were like Sandman done right or whatever it was. You know, and the Marvel's like, yeah, right. But that little appearance that he had oh, yeah. made me go, oh, now I want to know more about this character. Well, and I actually <laughs> didn't know who that was, but but it was a great read. Yeah, he was a great character was, in that. He used it in a way that made you want to learn yeah. more about it. So Absolutely. That's why I enjoy that series and why I think it, it deserves more attention. Yeah. Totally. Uh, what else? What else? What else? I mean, obviously, Teen Titans, we've been talking about that forever. Oh, yeah. Just because of, if you're any, if you're familiar with the show at all, even though it's been canceled, you know, it's not the same, but at least the same char- characters are still there. And... He could probably pick up Justice League Unlimited, too, if oh, he's yeah. familiar with that, because, I mean, I've I've gotten that just because... I like every every so often there's an issue they have characters in that I like and I pick that up and you know I give them the bend but but right. I do read through them and and they're pretty good. You know um I haven't read it yet but I've been researching it because of potential interviews and things like that but that hack slash I don't know if that's mature themes or anything like that but I read an uh, issue of that. I have like four of them that I need to read a friend of mine she's a huge fan of that and she mm-hmm. lent them to me and I just have to read them. Um yeah, I think that has the potential to be a little bit more mature. It's, it's I, I'm trying to remember if there was swearing in it or not. I don't recall, but I mean, it wasn't like it wasn't like a Vertigo heavy duty wasn't or Walking worse Dead than like heavy what, duty. What Buffy was even, you know, in some of yeah, the light, it's, and some it's, of the it's, well, tongue in, in cheek, and even for that, there's there's all those uh, Buffy and Angel comics mm-hmm. coming out right now with Spike and everything. Um, even Walking Dead really wasn't all that. If you know, if he's a fan of horror movies there's nothing in that yeah, comic but book. to a 16 year old i mean parents could have a real problem well, it, with walking dead true. it depends just stick it that depends one, what your parents stick that is. one in the middle of your pile yeah <laughs> when you walk into the house uh, we got another email from chris murren i've only started listening to the show recently so i apologize if you've covered these topics already what is the most you've ever spent on a single back issue and what is the hole in your collection that you're dying to fill the most right now? Well, the most I spent for a back issue was actually in the heyday of um, Valiant. Oh. I spent $75 for a raw number three, I think it was. And I forget even what the significance was for that. But It was I, just hard to find, I think. You know? It had a low print run, and, and I, I picked that up, and uh, now it's worth about $2. Yeah. Um, hole? The only real hole I'm trying to fill is just my backlog of old Justice League stuff. I mean, all the main things that I had been searching for and couldn't find for the longest time, I've actually found and, and completed in some fashion. So for me, it's just now going backwards and, and picking up uh, Justice League of America issues. I think I'm back to like 1970 or something like that, and I just have to keep going backwards now to the 80s and below is mostly what I'm missing, I think. Do you remember? I'm trying to remember how much I've spent. I um, mine isn't uh, any great shakes. Uh, Twenty bucks on New Teen Titans number one, the first Wolfman and Perez issue. Uh, but that was in that was in the '80s, and that book came out in 1980. So at that time, twenty bucks was a lot yeah. for me for an issue. Um, 
I recently saw, not recently, when I was when I lived in New York, I saw Teen Titans number one, the old, the original Teen Titans number one for I think it was seventy five or eighty five bucks, which I thought was that's pretty, pretty good. good. Yeah, I thought that was good. good. I, I don't know. It seemed like it was in good condition, but I didn't pick it up. Um, as far as a whole, it's going to sound stupid, but there was a Supergirl special shortly after she died in the crisis. Um, or or maybe it was after, I should say it was after her series ended before Crisis. And it's not the movie. It's not the official adapt, adaptation of the movie. It's not that Christmas, DC Christmas with the heroes or something. That, I, I, I'm pretty sure it's called Supergirl, a Supergirl special. And I've always wanted that because I, I don't know if it ties into Crisis or, or if it just caps off her series. So... I've only ever seen the cover once, and it's not necessarily a hole, but it's something that I know I've been looking for for a long time. Maybe it's called a very special Supergirl special. I don't know. <laughs> there for a while, it was the loser special, that Crisis on Infinite Earths cross, uh, tie-in, the loser special. That one and the Amethyst issue was a bear for me to find. Yeah. I, I took uh, what convention? I think it was Wizard World Philly last year that I found it. Yeah. Mine was the year before. I found the the loser special at one of those Harrisburg cons, mm-hmm. and um, the Amethyst was at Wizard World two years ago. I think the most I, I don't remember exactly. I, I got Gru Pacific number one, and it was twenty or twenty five bucks, and I think that was the most that I ever spent. And the the hole that I have is I I need to get there were only eight. Uh, Grooves published under Pacific Comics, and I only have issues one and two, so I need three through eight, and I also need the Groove special from Eclipse Comics. So those seven books together are the hole that I want to fill. I have every other Groo there is, well, except for the first appearance in Destroyer Duck number two. I think it was number two, or was it number one? No, number two, I think. And uh, but I don't really count that. I mean, it's, he, he's on like yeah. two pages or something. It's like, I mean, technically, yeah, if I was a guru completist, I would need it, but I'm not worried about it. But When after that $75, I never <laughs> paid more than 15, 20 bucks for a comic again. That was the most, except for now that I've, now that I've delved into those older Justice League, some of them are getting the $30, $40 range for me right now, but that's about it. Any, anything else was 10, 15 bucks tops. Yeah, m- me, when I look, it's like, Oh, five bucks. Oh, it's yeah. too much. Yeah, yeah. I'm not spending five bucks on a comic book. You I, know? Won't, I won't even do that for most Batman issues. Like, I have a certain starting point that I want my collection to go from, and I look at it, I'm like, five bucks, forget it. I can go put that towards a Justice League thing because that's what I really want to complete. Right. This Batman stuff, ah. I got. I have what I want of Batman for my taste, and anything else I'll pick up and trade, or this Chronicles if they ever get their button gear and keep that going, something like that. Well, it's funny because, like, you know, in the 80s when books were 60 cents and 75 cents or a dollar, a back issue that was five bucks meant something. It's like, okay, yeah, oh, yeah, I want that issue, or it was really worth it. Now comics are two fifty, two ninety nine, and back issues are three dollars, but their cover price is sixty cents. Now I'm the opposite. I'm like, no, I won't pay more than, than yeah. the cover price, or yeah. I want to find it at a <laughs> dollar bin somewhere. So yep. something switched in those. Well, especially since. if if you're not somebody that is planning to slab it or just hang it around, if you're going to read it. Man, buck or two buck bins, oh, yeah. most for most of oh, that yeah. stuff. Why bother getting it super pristine when you're just going to read it? Yeah, I was looking at, um, you know, Mile High. Oh, they used to be so good. Has you can buy things in different grades. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And I was looking at those grooves, and I and I was thinking, you know what? I just need to put an order in, get those three through eight, so I have the whole Pacific run. I'll worry about the special later because that's still like thirty, forty bucks or something. Wow. But, you know, the, the, those other Pacifics, I'm like, I can get a very fine or I can get a good or whatever. I forget the ratings. And, you know, they're like four or five bucks each. It's like, I'll just get seven of them and that'll be done. And I'll be, it'll be complete. Then I can relax. It's like, but I still haven't done it. It's like, I don't want to spend that much, <laughs> yeah. you know. I'm just, I don't know what I'm waiting for. Right? Well, and a couple of years ago, Maya High to me used to be so much better. I mean, all the specials they run are great, but their prices used to be better so that the specials meant more. Now it seems like their prices have gone up. Just enough that it distastes me from ordering anything recently because yeah. I'm like, that's ah, just a little too much for me. Well, my my back issue hunting has changed though. The, the, my mentality is, uh, you know, I only buy it Wizard World Philly. I mean, really yeah. buy yeah. like yeah. you know a hundred or more for back issues, <laughs> and it more. it has to be fifty cents for anything that's in the eighties or lower, and for current 
and nineties a dollar. I won't spend more than that. You know, now maybe I'll buy cover price if they have it. You know, sure. um, something that's recent. Or I think I picked up like um, I don't know something that had to do with one of the events that I missed out on, and I picked it up for like maybe four dollars instead of two ninety nine. You know, or whatever. But my my mentality has really changed when it comes to back issues. It's like. I don't like people on the forum when they post what they get every week. They're like, "Here's my new stuff and here's my back issues." I, I don't do that anymore. No, I don't yeah, either. No. No. I don't even really. I don't even look at back issues. I go to Golden Eagle. In the last two years, I haven't even looked at the back issues. Like, to me, I don't even care. It's like I'm just not interested. Yeah, I mean, it would be nice to have, and I, I kind of envious of people who are, you know, they have, you know. 20 different issues they need to fill in the run of some, you know, like Justice League or The yeah, Flash yeah. or something. It's like, that's cool to have a whole run of some classic comic like yeah. that. But I'm just, I'm not, you know, I'm so far from that that at this point it would cost me, you know, <laughs> <Arm> and hundreds <laughs> and hundreds of dollars to get anywhere even close to that. And so that's why it's like, hmm, my goal is three issues, I mean, eight, seven issues of Gru or yeah. six issues of Gru is three through eight. I need six, issues, six whopping issues. You know, it probably cost me about 30 bucks, you know, <laughs> yeah. but it's like, I'm still not even that motivated to do it. Well, and, and, and for me, I just made a conscious decision. Justice League was what I was going to do. So if I went to look for any back issues, I mean, you know, the five year later Legion that we always talk about, I, yeah, I'd like to pick them up at some point, but even that's not a priority as far as back issues go for me. If I'm going to spend a couple dollars for this, which is okay, I'd rather put that towards a $30 Justice League and just get one book that time. And that, that's what I've been doing. I just pick up one or two at a show and that's it. Yeah, like I, I kind of am. I want to do a. Uh, I want to do that. Start looking around for some of those All Star Squadrons or something in in cheap bins, and just it's kind of like my goal. It's my low budget version of you know, yeah. having something to do at a show in fifty cent sure. bins. It's like oh, it gives me something to look for. That's some of them for the A's, so you don't have to <laughs> dig too deep. <laughs> yeah, some exactly. of those are hard to find. That, that's a good challenge. It took me a while to finish that run. Well, but I mean, I'm not that worried about finishing it, just having some to do. And, oh, I, and I might look at more of the, because you got me started on those Giffen de Mateus um, <laughs> Justice Leagues. And, and I did pick, like in Chicago, I picked up a handful of scattered issues. And I probably before I go, I'll print out my list of missing ones. And maybe I'll find some of those at some yeah. of the conventions. You can find those in 10 cent bins sometimes. <laughs> exactly. That's why it's a good place to. <laughs> That's a lot of fun to spend do. Spend a dollar, get 10 books. Well, and, and since I love that run so much, I look for that like 10 cent, 25 cent stuff. And I'll pick up a couple for the kids. I don't care if they destroy it because they have a nice pristine set waiting for them when they get older. I'm, I'm looking for another email. You know, sometimes I think I'm I'm on crack here. I, I mark these emails to read on the air, and then I look at them and I go, "Why? What's special? What you know?" It's like it's it's a decent email, but nothing. I don't know. We should I, we should apologize to the audience because we did have an interview scheduled for oh, this right, one, right, and, right. and we it's couldn't get a hold of the person, and so now we're kind of caught off guard and. To maintain our schedule, we you know we're pumping one we through. We need to we need to release an episode. So if it's a little disjointed, we we apologize. Should we do an off the rack? Do yeah, we, we have? Do that. You guys want to start? I'm going to grab yeah. something from my room. Uh, you go first. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is also good. We I mean this is also good. We, Shane and I both are using new mics. So yeah, we're we're plowing through. I wanted to hear my voice. <laughs> yeah, so this is a good way to just get used to the new mic. Yeah, because I'm finding that I I talk way too loud now. Sometimes I gotta cut back. Uh, I'm gonna talk about um, Hawkman 35 through 46 uh, by Palmiotti and yeah, figures. I didn't write the other guy's name down. I think it's Mick Gray, <laughs> Joe Bennett on the artwork. Um, it is. It was originally solicited as like a year long story in the life of Hawkman that was supposedly supposed to you know, test um, uh, test him and, and change his world a little bit and, you know, throw it in a, in a new direction. And it actually was very good. After James Robinson and Rags Morales left Hawkman, I bailed. I, I, I left too. And I, I remember I was, that. I was like, mm, I don't know if I can stick with it. I guess I was weeding some stuff out. And I really love those first 25 issues, so I, I didn't want to keep going with it. So I jumped on with issue 35 uh, of Hawkman. And... It's really a good storyline, and um, I'm. It made me realize a few things. It made me realize that 
I really do like this new Hawkman uh, as Kate Carter Hall as as the reincarnation of the Golden Age Hawkman with all the other Hawkman, you know, like that he can access the memories and things like that. But I like that it's him. Um, and I really, really, really like Kendra, Hawkgirl. I think she's becoming like a new favorite female hero for me. Um, she's fun. She's funny. She stands up. She doesn't. She's a she's a partner to to Carter and Hawkman. She's not a sidekick. She's not a wife. You know, like um, the Silver Age and the Justice League, and during the eighties, you know, when it was the the two Thanagarian husband and wife, she was kind of downplayed. And then the Hawk World series came out, and they were equals but the relationship wasn't the same because they they set it in current continuity and then they kind of changed things around there and kind of messed things up but this one especially because hawk girl came first in jsa and then the reincarnation of hawkman came about i something about her i really like and i think it also has to do with the cartoon the jlu cartoon oh, that, yeah. that i, I love the the hawk woman on there the hawk girl I, get, I think she's called and i love the dynamic of the hawkman on that series going after her and so that he he takes the secondary role kind of so um so you throw all that in and and this run these 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 12 issues um that actually Sean Whelan talked about in our episode 100 as well um it, they're just it's good and it's the big thing is also the the reappearance of Golden Eagle uh, an old Teen Titans West character and how he fits into Hawkman continuity and I didn't know if I was going to like it at first, and I did. I did like it. Uh, the JSA guest star, they have they have ties to what happened in Identity Crisis, and um, it's I, I really enjoy it. And they brought back some old Hawkman villains, and I thought it was I thought it was good. I, it's not a five out of five, you know. There's some things that every now and then, you know, maybe the art suffers a little bit, or the story's a little slow, or something's not quite believable. But I'd give it a solid four. Four out of five freaking swears. It, cool. it, I really enjoyed it. I did the same as you. I stopped reading when John's left. Yeah. Because, I, again, I needed to cut back, and it was like, well, if John's isn't on it, I, this is the only reason I bought it in the first place. Cause, yeah. But maybe, I'll, oh, God. <laughs> I plowed through. It's good. I, li- I like all that interim stuff. It was really yeah. good. And, and, I, and I've been reading it since. Like, yeah. whatever they did has interest, interest me enough that I have to keep picking it up. And now that's Chaykin's. Chicken and, yeah. and yeah. Simonson, right? Yeah, yep. with issue 50, and it's going to be retitled Hawk <laughs> Girl, and yeah. it's like, oh, now it's like, oof, now I have to get it. Well, yeah. and, and I didn't, at when the creative teams changed after John's left, I didn't notice a big difference in storytelling through that. They they did their own story, but it didn't, it seemed to flow together very nicely. Um, so I didn't, I didn't mind the transition at all. The one thing I think I missed the most is... When they added that little Starman Opal City kind of flavor to to Saint Roche, Saint Roche, I guess that's how you pronounce it. <clears throat> like they gave the in Hawkman, they're giving this the first twenty five issues really gave the city a life of its own as well, and the characters felt a little more authentic, a little more uh, of that region. Mm-hmm. Some of that I, I I lost in this run oh, yeah. here. Yeah, I, I lose some of that tie, but. Um, and the Rags Morales artwork was beautiful on those yeah, oh, first yeah, 25 yeah. issues. It was just gorgeous. So, but but still, it's it's an enjoyable read. Um, I'm going to go with a couple because I was perusing some of the stuff I'm behind on. And uh, I sat down one night and I read the first part of the Wolverine Miller run, ah. which was excellent. And uh, that's that's in my, my next run of pie. Like I'm trying to do a round of everything I've missed to kind of keep some kind of order to everything I've I've behind on. So I really enjoyed that. Uh, I, I'm really glad that I picked that up and I have all that to read because it it was really a fun issue to read. Um, I picked up, we talked a little bit about it before, Athena Voltaire. And um, it felt like a female Indiana Jones. I really, really had a good time reading that. Um, and I'm looking very much forward to the second issue when it comes out. And and that's that's going to be a regular mainstay for me. Um, the artwork's nice. The dialogue's nice. It, it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. So far, those... Uh those it's been solicited monthly. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, but it is a five issue miniseries, is it, right? Is it? Yeah, okay. and because and then they're hoping that 
because they were talking about this on the forum, I believe. I think that's where I read it. And, you know, they're hoping that there's interest because they said they have a bunch of stories that they could go for a long time with it. Yeah. It seems like they could. I mean, but I'm pretty sure. And it might be one of those deals where if there's no interest, they can wrap it up in five. Mm-hmm. But if there is, maybe they can oh, just keep, keep going. going. I cool. can't remember if it's officially a miniseries or if they're open it's one of those deals. Yeah, but. Uh, I've caught up on all the Batman Red Hood storyline that I was behind on, and uh, that was pretty enjoyable. I I kind of, for this current issue that's out, is what I I went to the store and bought so I could finish it and be caught up. And I kind of was looking for more punch at the end, but it seems like I thought like I thought like now it would end and you would get ready for the Infinite Crisis stuff, and it seems like there's still more to tell with that. Mm. And uh, I'm really curious to see what what happens this month because cause I will probably go to the store and buy it just because I am caught up. Is that you think it'll wrap up in the annual? Because they're 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 hyping that as the, yeah the big yeah I think it could be now that now that that has been become such a uh, an advertisement for them right. Um, the other thing I finished was uh, the second volume of Marvel Team Up. I mean we do always talk about it, but I I almost went to the store and bought the last three issues that are now out. Just because I was caught up, because I wanted to keep going with it, so I had I had such a momentum going with it. But I'm I'm kind of biting my tongue, waiting for that next trade because that's what I have the first two in. And I actually looked at your auction. I'm thinking I could buy Peter's auction and then just <laughs> go for the issues. But no, I'm sticking with the trade on that one. But that was such an enjoyable read, so much fun. I, I have to say I'm a little disappointed that I don't know what the story is, and I I do remember reading it, but I forget that Scott Collins didn't finish out those last three issues of. Um, the Titanus War. Did you read the second trade? You read mm-hmm. it. All, yeah. yeah. So it's up to, I guess it's 11, 12, and 13. Um, Paco Medina took over. And I, I think there's some story, I don't know what it is, but, uh, you know, whether he get he just got reassigned or whatever. But I thought he, because he, Scott Collins really added a lot to Kirkman's mm-hmm. script. And, oh, yeah. And when pa- I love Paco Medina, but I think it took him and those three issues to get used to Kirkman's script, to get used to... V- the fun you can have with the script, because that's something that um, Collins was doing. He was having fun with, you know, Spider-Man crashing into Wolverine or just, you know, the craziness of Kirkman's script. And I, I kind of felt, hmm, I was a little disappointed in that. You know, I don't I wonder if he was, too, if he got reassigned and, and he was like, oh, you know, I, I work this hard to establish this kind of continuity, you know, with art, the art, the art, and he doesn't get to finish it. I was like, yeah. Especially because he was consistent for the first oh, yeah. ten issues, it was, yeah. just, it was just all his artwork. It's funny to hear you say that because I had almost the opposite reaction. Although I'm perhaps rethinking it because of your reasoning, but what, I love Collins's artwork on the Flash; that it was fantastic. Mm-hmm. The first time I read the first six issues, because I read that trade twice, I was like, "Oh, this it doesn't feel right to me." Like I. It felt perfect on the flash, but I, th- I kind of thought that his matching, he didn't feel right to that book for me. Second time I read the trade, didn't bother me as much. I, I was used to it by then or whatever. And when I got to the second trade and I got to Paco Medina, I went, okay, now this is the artwork I want to see in this book. But now to hear you say about how he might have missed some of the you know, humorous opportunities, I can see that. I can see how he was just drawn a comic book beautifully but maybe not what is perfect for the book i mean i don't know i still might prefer paco on this book over well and you may do that after the next however many issues right. and you yeah. see the the grand scheme of it he may actually do a better job in the end but but immediately my my gut reaction was ooh i like this better than mm-hmm. scott yeah. collins <clears throat> cuz when i um i sat down and i've read the first four or three some other time before but then i sat down and read all thir- actually all 14 but all 13 of that storyline and when it got to Paco Medina, he does great stuff, and he has, you know, some nice design work, and and there's some, <clears throat> you know, very dynamic poses and and things like that. But then I, when I went back and looked at the Collins artwork again, it was funny that he could make Spider-Man <laughs> so expressive behind a mask. You know, yeah, like yeah, that's I a agree. sign of a really good artist yeah. that can take that and, and run with it and make all the characters. Um, very much a Scott Collins drawn character, but still true to to their their costume design and and they don't look as jarring from you know from from the book that they're in normally. Sure. Um, 
Um, not disjointed. Yeah, like the, he does. Uh, there's that splash page of the Hulk when the boy teleport or whatever he does, you know. And then there's a big splash page of the Hulk just kind of walk, just standing over him. God, it looks so good. And so I, I, I kind of miss that. And I, I'll have to research why he had to leave. Or yeah. Um, part of me is always like, you know, you get a guy who can do monthly issues, and and then they don't finish out the storyline that it starts. Like, oh man, that's disappointing. Yeah, I mean, unless it's for some really grand good reason or something, it is it is a little disappointing because yeah. you get used to that, you like it, yeah. and then nah, all right, you're off. All right, my recent read was uh, the second New Avengers hardcover, The Century, mm-hmm. and uh, by Bendis and. Um, Steve McNiven and Maury Hollowell. Uh, I really, really enjoyed this book. Um, I first of all, I didn't know anything about the Century because I had never read the Paul Jenks, Jenkins uh, Century miniseries, so I didn't know his origin or any of that. So I got all that in here, and so as a first time for my first exposure. It was uh, it was really interesting. It was a neat concept, and uh, I mean, for somebody who maybe already knew, perhaps this, these four issues weren't as powerful. But uh, for me, I really dug it. Um, I, I like how we're seeing the beginnings of this Illuminati Council here, and I think it's such a great concept to take these powerhouses of the Marvel U and have them all be talking to each other. And I kind of like, I love how it's. Iron Man, Tony Stark, and not Captain America, who's yeah. heading up the Illuminati, because it's like, oh, okay, who, you know, Captain America might be awesome on the battlefield, but behind the scenes, man, Tony is wheeling and dealing with business all right. day long, so right. he's the guy who's going to be sneaky, and I like that. He's the one, he's the one that's going to have the board, the board yeah. of directors. And exactly. Yeah. Didn't we talk about, or maybe it was on the forums, where that group of people, minus like Namor and a couple others, was referenced back in an old Uncanny X Men issue. No, that was um, it, it was uh, Contest of Champions number one, where they just happened oh, to show up in a panel. It. It's um, oh yeah, I remember we were talking about Doctor that. Strange, Xavier, Iron Man, and Mister Fantastic, I think, and they just yeah. happened to be there and just you know it's like oh look at that, and it just just like I I I'd, I'd almost like them to do that, like to think that it's been behind the scenes all this yeah. time. I'm really interested in that Illuminati, yeah. and I love like I love the use of Black Bolt. Because first of all, he's incredibly powerful, mm-hmm. and they just don't ever use him. And the, and the yeah. whole Inhumans are kind of like put off to the side most of the time. But I can't understand that. So it's just like it's nice to see him sitting there, just nodding his head, because of course he can't say anything. <laughs> I and mean, that's cool, you know. And I, I don't know. I th- I just thought that concept was great, and the story was fun. And when they're fighting this the Wrecking Crew guy, Wrecker, yeah, Wrecker, and uh, you know, I it's just I really really enjoyed it. And uh, what else is in that trade? The wanted files. They put the wanted. Yeah, files in. it's see because it was only four issues of New Avengers, and then the New Avengers, New Avengers most wanted files. Which, like, these are all the people that escaped that prison in the beginning okay. of New Avengers. Yeah. I guess, right? Is yeah, that is that's that what, what it is. is? So you're getting five comics worth of stuff. I mean, if if I had paid cover price for this at twenty bucks, I would have been like, yo, four comics for twenty dollars. Yeah. I can get these issues for less than five bucks each, but since I, I don't know if this was fifty percent off or forty, but I mean it was close enough. <laughs> yeah, you know, and for again, I, I have the hardcover for the first one, or do I? Yeah, I do. I think I do. <laughs> uh, I, I bought the issues of those. I don't remember if I even have the card cover for this, but anyway, you know, I'm, uh, they sucked me into it anyway. But I mean, I really enjoyed it, and, and it's. Uh, I have to finish that storyline. I think it's a great. I think it's a great book, and, and you know, I know there's plenty of people out there who have some issues with Bendis, but not mm. me. I'm still loving him. So. You know that no, is not with that. Not with that. Not title. with that. Not that is me, probably yeah. the most fun Bendis I have ever read personally, and I haven't read a lot of Bendis, but I love him on this book. I'm having a great time with reading him on this book. If you if you're if you want to read some great early Bendis, the stuff that got me hooked is I. Just, was it last month in the last previews they solicited the um, Sam and Twitch trade, the oh, early yeah, stuff? Yeah. That's the first I discovered Bendis. I didn't have any clue who he was. And, you know, I was walking in a comic shop and I saw, oh, Sam and Twitch. It's like, hmm. I liked those guys from Spawn. Sure. This is not a Spawn comic. It's detective, dark and gritty. I'll try it. And the first issue just, whoosh, and that's when Bendis went on my radar big time. And so from that moment on, um, 
I've the been first, a Bendis fan. I have the first two trades of powers, but I haven't I haven't delved into those yet. Wow, you gotta get on that. Oh, I'm you. It's unbelievable the amount of trades I now have behind, let alone regular. Did issues. you read Powers, Peter? I read the first trade. Who is Retro Girl? Yeah. Who mm-hmm. killed Retro? Who killed Retro Girl? Yeah. 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 I'm. 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 I'm not uh, Adam or Doe behind, but I'm. I'm behind. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Adam. And we're all waiting for the alias, right? Alias Omnibus. Oh yes. Yeah. I. You know what? I caved and didn't order it. Oh. Oh man, you're the my, one who talked me into it. I know. Well, my <laughs> my freaking order was like a hundred and forty some dollars, and I went. Oh, I cannot spend. An- I cannot have another hundred fifty dollar book. Do you have the alias issues? I have all the issues. Oh, okay. You know. So for me, it was yeah. like, what? Why am I buying this? I'm buying bonus. it because it looks cool on my shelf. Yeah. The reality is, how many times am I going to read that again in my life? If I bought the hardcover, the omnibus, yeah, I would probably read it one more time. And then it would sit there and look pretty on my shelf. I have the issues. I can pull them out. I mean, selling the issues on eBay, I tried. I, I thought about it before, and I watched, and they weren't even going for much. It was like, geez, I could get $15 for my 28 issues alias. It's like, it's not worth it. I'll hold on to them. So... I say, and I got I, I I scrapped something else and I got my order to a hundred bucks and I went all right. Oh jeez, because you know that was thirty five dollars. Yeah. Like, shit. I mean, I know I'm gonna I'm gonna hate myself when when you see it when we all come when in you, one when day. You're yeah, I got my it, yeah. Yeah. And it, but but there again, it is different because I have never read it. I never picked up an issue. So sure, I'll go for the for the bells and whistles. Right one. for that, it's oh, perfect because sure, it's sure. twenty eight issues worth of comics yeah. for thirty five dollars. Right. You, you would be fool not to if yeah. you wanted to read it. It's a perfect deal. But yeah. I. I just couldn't do it, and and you know now this month they're really they they got the alias uh, Uncanny X Men, or it's going to be on the bus. Did I say the alias yeah. Uncanny X Men? Yeah. <laughs> um, but again, I have those essentials. See, and I have a couple, uh, of and those I read too. them, and it's like, well, now, yeah, I they're not in that. color, and it would be nice to have color. But again, it's another. Geez, it's a hundred dollar book, so I had fifty bucks. The only reason I bought the FF one is because I didn't have anything. I had none yeah. of that stuff. So, I looked at that too, and I thought, eh, nah, I just don't. I'm not interested in reading that. They're right all now. books that I'd love to have every single one of them of, right? But I can't afford it. And I mean, I don't know what the next one they're going to release is. You know, if it's something I haven't bought yet, yeah, then it gets serious consideration. If I have the issues, I just can't do it. Yeah. See, I almost see the alias as becoming a book of the month special extra. You know, like once we all have it, yeah. You know, yeah, that could be. Sit down and read it. You know, and then let's talk about it because it's it's a great format. One big book and done, and and you know twenty eight issues of, of a new character. And yeah, we've, I've heard so much about it, and I don't see him here. I guess you and Kevin and probably Jamie probably. Yeah, have I read think it. Jamie read it. Yeah, but it's probably been a while since you guys. <laughs> oh yeah, I would definitely reread yeah. it. I, I would be excited. And Tasha read it too, and she really enjoyed it. Yeah, so I think I thought that I, because I just assumed everybody was getting the audio, but I was like, oh, perfect. You know, down the road we'll all just do a book of the month extra. <laughs> you know, because <clears throat> I'm sure people out there have read some. You know, some of it. they could send because there the are thoughts. trades available yeah. and the issues are readily available. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. And, yeah. and it's not a thing that we would do. You know, we're we're not going to give a month, but just you know, next week we're going to talk about it. If you want to send an email, send an email. If not, whatever. You know, so you have to whip out your issues, and you're going to go through your issues and you're gonna be like, damn it, I should have got the omnibus. <laughs> no, I know. I, I don't. I mean, I know I'm going to regret it, but I just I, I can't afford it. It's right. that simple. You know, see, and as much as much Marvel as I am getting now in the last six months, there's still that that DC guy in me that's like pushing more for the absolutes because it means more to me personally than all of these omnibuses. There's nothing wrong with them, but just I would, even though I have all the DC stuff, I just would rather put the money towards that because now I didn't I didn't know this, but there's an absolute planetary. And I'm like, oh, well, that would be worth I think that getting. Was the first one, wasn't it? I think so. Now, now that I. have Done some research. I'm like, that would be worth it. The one that I regret not buying because I never knew about it or never pay attention was the Absolute League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. I, s- I saw that. There are two volumes. I mean, I would really just like to have the first one the most. Yeah. It's like, oh, but I'm not paying full price for that. No yeah. way. Well, they just they announced and and they talk about it. And Chris at the Collective Comics Library mentioned it about the Absolute Kingdom come. But it's seventy five bucks. Ooh. At least that's what they said. Seventy five. Said Amazon. Is that four issues. Four issues. Four, four issues. square bound issues. They're forty eight pages, but. Still, that's you know, a lot. I have that. Uh, I don't know about that one. I have the hardback of that already. I yeah I yeah I. And like Alex Ross art though on giant oversized paper and yeah. see well, and if I it's like fifty percent off. Mm. Mm. See, I mentioned that, and it's different. I think than this is the comparison I made on the form. It's different than the crisis one where Perez was so detailed. 
Alex Ross is it's a different word than detailed. I don't know what it is, but when you when I know, you look, I know what you're trying to say. When you look at those smaller images, they're not detailed. They're 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 that painted you can't get that detail with paint, you know what I mean? So Well, to, don't say that. Well you can. You can but, Alex Ross doesn't <laughs> right. do that on his Like background. I'm thinking of the one battle scene in issue four where, where it's an overhead shot, it's at the top of the page, whatever panel it is and and they're all running. They all basically have that same kind of right. stick fish stickish kind of quality to it even though you can tell who they are oh, yeah. and stuff like that how is that going to look blown up might like, get a little fuzzy or something yeah like yeah. the the captain marvel cliffhanger when he knocks down superman that's going to look awesome blown up you know but for me i and again i might i'm probably talking totally out my ass when i see it i'll probably go oh yeah i want it but as of now i'm kind of like in my mind i can't see that well and and you have those you have those tabloid size things, but they were specifically painted to be that big. Yeah, he's so drawing he had for that, that size, in, exactly. in his head. Yeah, so you you could be right on that. I don't know, or or maybe they'll shoot from his original big pages and and you know shrink it to the right size. Maybe they, you know I don't I don't know how they do that process. So yeah. I'm, like I said, I'm probably in my my mind is probably very different than what's actually going to be on paper. But seventy five bucks is still seventy five is a lot for four. Should issues. have been a, a fifty dollar one. Yeah, because like, yeah. I mean, Hush was freaking. How many issues of Hush? Twelve. Eight, yeah, twelve issues plus and a that, couple little extras. And that was a fifty dollar yeah. absolute. And Watchmen was seventy five, but and that was twelve issues, but twelve issues with no ads, so they were thirty two pages each, uh, with a lot of text material, right, yeah. and then there's a whole supplement material yep. afterwards. So yep. I don't know about that Kingdom Come. Now, if it's fifty and half off, well, then you're talking yeah, about price range. Yeah, I said range. if it's if it was fifty, and maybe they just posted the seventy five, and it's and it's wrong. But if it's fifty, I'll get it. Yeah, and half off, I'll get it. I'm looking forward to the um, Sandman absolutes. Oh, I am too. I don't have yeah. any of them at all. I have I have most of the trades, but I am missing a few. And I was contemplating getting the hard covers, and now it's like, well, I'm just waiting because. Yep. And I mean, I certainly hope they're not hundred dollar ones because you know I don't know how I don't know. That's the thing. No one knows is how many are they going to do? Is each trade going to become an absolute, or is an absolute going to collect you know like two trades worth or something? Because yeah. then that would be what is it nine? It's I think it's almost nine or ten hardcovers. Yeah, alone. it's like oh that would be ridiculous to have nine or ten nine absolutes. Absolute, yeah. But if they did two, I'd like to see. And it was a that. set of like five absolutes. Yeah. That would be I could handle that. But you know I just it depends on the cost. Well, that's something I always thought to pick up, and I just never did. And this is a perfect format for me to do it because I don't have anything. I've never read anything. So I'll pick the first one up, and if I like it, I'll keep getting it. Well, and I have the old trades, which was when before they were putting the num- they were numbering them. So I have to, like, I mean, I keep them on my shelf in order, but if they somehow get, I have to look and see which one comes first because I never remember. It's like, how hard is it to put a freaking number one, <laughs> number two, number three? You have to get the run that does have the numbers. Well, I know. On the spot. And that's what yeah. the problem is. If I buy a new, if I buy some of the trades I'm missing now, then they'll have the number and the other ones won't, and then they won't match. And then I'll want all new trades. It's yeah. like, screw that. I'll get the absolute. <laughs> yep. That'll blow your whole system. It just makes it so much easier for me. And then I can get rid of the other trades on eBay and, and you know. Yeah, pay subsidize the cost of this a little bit. <laughs> yeah, that's how I got Hush. That's how I got the Absolute Hush. I subsidized with the hardback uh, two volumes. Yeah, they that's... sold pretty well too. I was surprised for how many issues and different well, variations you know, of that I, are out there. Are there are so many people I think that don't. I was surprised when we had the uh, somebody put a poll on our forum. Do you buy previews every month? And. I just assumed it would be like 90% said yes because yeah. how else do you know what you're going to buy because that's the only thing that tells you. That's my Bible for and that And it was week. like, <laughs> it was what, like 30% said yes and everyone else said, you know, uh, like 10% said once in a while and everyone else was like, never buy it. I'm like, <sighs> I'm thinking to myself, you, you buy comics every month but you don't get previews. I don't get, I mean, I've been, I've been getting previews for more than 10 years. I mean, oh, yeah. we used to get it free at Golden Eagle and then you had to pay a dollar and now you have to, you know, it's more expensive. But I mean, forever, as long as I can remember, I've been getting previews. Yeah, me too. More than 10 years. It's got to be 15 years or whatever. I don't even know, but it's been a long time I've been getting previews. So I was really surprised to see that. And so I guess to get back to the uh, um, Hush thing, there were probably you know probably 90% of the yeah. audience didn't even know there was going to be an absolute Hush. So you were able to sell your hardcovers because they didn't know because yeah. they didn't read previews or they didn't get on the internet or I don't know what. Yeah, but. you're probably right. So, I mean, you know, like, I probably could have sold my alias on eBay because <laughs> nobody, no one knew that knew. there was an omnibus coming. <laughs> Silly people. I, I want to know. I want Seriously, though, I, wanna, I want 
to get some emails or something from people who don't buy previews how do you... to explain to us how they know what books they want to buy. Yeah. Unless they just just look at them off the shelf. But, I mean, doesn't your comic shop have previews sitting there? And don't they maybe, try to sell them to you at the beginning of each month? I mean, I, maybe some stores just let their. I know. I think Old Eagle used to have a store copy that you could look at. Well, you can look at it when you're there, but I mean, it's. But God, I, oh, man, I stand really, there for four hours looking at that. I mean, I guess if you only buy Marvel and DC and you have a pool list, you know that your books are going to going to be constantly there. So maybe yeah. by talking from other people, you hear of something new coming out, or they see a retail poster or something. But I guess yeah, I, 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 it's just the stuff like. How do you know which trades you want to get? Yeah. Because I'm so used to, like, Golden Eagle not getting every trade or, or getting one copy of a trade, and if I'm not there Wednesday at 10 o'clock, it, that trade could be gone, and then I don't even know it came out. If if I wasn't looking at previews, you would miss half the stuff. Right. Because that's well, the shop I'm used to shopping at. So maybe other stores get three copies of every new trade and keep them on the shelf perpetually. I don't know, so they don't have to worry about it, but... When we've said it, bef- I've said it before that that I I learned so much from doing this show, but I've gotten so much more out of previews in the last year just because I look at everything now, every single um, publisher in that whole independent section after the big ones. I look at every single one to see if there's anything remotely interesting to me, and I get so much more out of the previews now in the last year. It, it it's worth the money, even if I'd have to pay full price. I think it would be worth it at my point in life now. Just because I look at everything so detailed and read, try to read every single, almost every single description if it has any kind of interest to me at all. Just because I'm constantly looking for new stuff now. Oh, yeah, I, 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 like we said before, it's my favorite part of, I open my new yeah. shipment and that's the first thing I do is go right, go right to the, uh. Well, I told you guys I didn't even open my, my bags of comics yet for my shipment. I went right for the previews and. Put them aside, and here it is a week later, and I, I, I gotta get down and bag and board them because it's driving me crazy. <laughs> That's just silly. <laughs> and we were just talking about Athena Voltaire, Ooh. and this is a Stump the Rios from Steve Bryant. I'm question, doomed. question number one, DC. In Jack Kirby's Commandy, the last boy on Earth meets an interesting female named Tila. What is her relationship with the last boy on Earth? Who? Is she his cousin? Eh. <laughs> Tila is a dolphin who obtains a permit. To make Commandy her squire. <laughs> Didn't he say he meets a girl named Tila? Meets a female. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> that look on your face. <laughs> what are you putting two in there already? From my past episode. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, question two, Marvel. In Master of Kung Fu, Shang-Chi meets cabbie Rufus T. Hackstabber in New York. He's already got the quarter over the thing. And later travels to Casablanca for another encounter with Rufus, as well as his cousin, Quigley J. Warmflash. What famous persons are Hackstabber and Warmflash based on? Uh, Humphrey Bogart and W.C. Fields. Oh, Hackstabber is based on Groucho Marx, and Quigley J. Warmflash is based on W.C. Fields. Oh, <laughs> it's a good try, though. Oh, my goodness. You never read Master of Kung Fu? No, me either. I want to, though. I, I need to get that. That's in Essentials, right? Or I don't know. Is it Iron Fist is in Essentials? Iron Fist. Oh, okay. I don't know about that one. I hope they do a Master of Kung Fu Essentials. Question number three, independent. In Xenozoic Tales, what is the code that Jack Tenrick lives by, and what does it mean? Koo e u a a ding dang walla walla bing bang, <laughs> and it means dinner. <laughs> what a poor showing! What a poor showing! Jack follows the machinatio vitae, keeping nature in balance, prevent the cataclysm from happening again, prevent the use of advanced technology. 
You could have stumped all the geeks, and I don't think we'd get some of these lately, oh, no, man. I don't Jeez. think anybody would have gotten that. I, yeah, I never. I, was that Mark Ouch. Schultz? I mean, was that Schultz? I don't know. Cenozoic Tales, the same guy did Cadillacs and Dinosaurs? Oh. Who did that? I don't remember now. Maybe I need to look it up in Comic Book DB here. All right, Steve. Whew. A pounding, a pasting. Yeah. What do we give him? I don't know. We'll figure something out. We'll send you a copy of Athena Voltaire. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't give up my copy of Athena Voltaire. Mm, that's not in here. It's not listed. No. All right, there, there's another there, homework there's your assignment. Mission. <laughs> another homework assignment. Yes, yeah, Steve. Somebody you brought that. it up. You got to put it in the <laughs> comic book DB. Let's try. Uh, let's try calling somebody. You know, speaking of calling somebody, Little Witch was on the forum and said that she uh, she wanted us to call her during one episode or something. It didn't matter what time of day or night because even though it was three in the morning over there. She had her cell phone on and she was ready. It didn't matter. I I, heard, I I read that one too. <laughs> I'm just trying to find somebody who's not Eastern time because it's pretty late here. Ten of ten. <clears throat> we need to have thirty hour days. <laughs> All right. How about Oklahoma? Oklahoma. Sing it, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> Where the wind comes whipping down the plain. That's all I know of it. Oh, I was trying to think of the other song. <laughs> I'm just a girl that can't say no. <laughs> I'm in a terrible fix. I'm pretty sure you shouldn't yep, sing about being a girl. <laughs> Lennon Patton. That yeah. sounds familiar. He, he sent some email, uh, audios and maybe some voicemails and things like that. There's a big pause there. I was like, oh. <laughs> I better start looking for another one. <laughs> Please leave your message for 405. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, we'll try someone else. Dang nabbit. <laughs> Every time we try, we just... It's a dry night. <laughs> what time would it be out in Oklahoma at this time? 8.50. Two... Yeah, I think there they should be two hours. They should be two hours. No, I thought there were just one when I visited my cousin. Oh, yeah, they might They might not. But then again, I was in that little panhandle part that's as far east as Oklahoma goes. I don't know. Maybe maybe the, the it's is, it is called mountain time, and they're on the plane, so it might not be... Till like you get to Colorado or something that it yeah. jumps again. Oh, sorry. Kind of wonder that if that one. big part of Texas that juts out to the west that might be might be getting out in the third time zone. I don't know where it breaks. Oh, that's another Good east day. coaster. Oh, another east. Coaster. Tell people put times you're available. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. Do you mind yeah. getting called at ten o'clock at night? It'd be all right. There's no lost on tonight. Right. There's no small Michigan. I, that's what I was thinking. I was like, wonder what's <laughs> on tonight that he maybe he's watching TV. <laughs> he's got his cell phone turned off. All right, uh, Brian. Uh, it's a uh, Grayson Geek on the forum. He's okay. in. He's in Michigan. So I think we can do that. And if you want us to call you, just email your phone number to uh, comicgeekspeak at gmail dot com. Your phone number, your name, and where you're from, so we know where we're calling. With the header, um, call me. Call me. Yep. For those new listeners out there. He's got music playing. Hello? Hello, Brian. Hello? Uh, uh, <laughs> what the heck was that? We had ba- It had it's like a bad connection. Maybe he yeah, didn't hear it. Yeah, let me try again. <laughs> Don't. It's tough coming up with this stuff. <laughs> the magic. <laughs> you got music like why is you're waiting for it to call? <laughs> I wonder how you get that going. I don't know. It's 
got to be some kind of switchboard there. Some Madonna. <laughs> Last time it was Particle Man. Wait, 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 My name wait, wait, might wait. be Giants. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic oh, message God system. Sakes. Two, four, he answered. Eight, turn turn oh, did it was the same number? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> All right, no call me. Ah. <laughs> That's the end of that. Ah. I've had enough. That was funny, though, with the music. It went right into a, a hold pattern. I know some people do, you know, they do that. They'll Maybe his phone picked up right away because uh, yeah. it was turned off and they just... No, have... it said it. a it, uh, message popped up real quick that you, before I could oh. click it over that said, please enjoy some music <laughs> while your phone is ringing or whatever. It's like, <laughs> That's okay. Cool. That's weird. No, All I right. like that. Here's a here's a voicemail. You guys smell that? No, I smell I smell Batman. Peter, are you are you in my car? I smell oh, Batman. <laughs> <laughs> I totally didn't know where he was going with that at first. I didn't either. I was getting a little worried. <laughs> it's like drive by voicemails. <laughs> I know, it's funny. <laughs> There's another one coming up very shortly. Uh oh. <laughs> I'm nervous now. Yeah. I love comic books. I said, I love comic books. A mother effing, mother effing comic books. I love comic books. I love comic books. Mother effing, mother effing comic books, man. I just picked up Godland number six. It's mighty good comic book. <laughs> Everyone should be reading Godland. It's a series from Image. Mother F and Mother F and comic book. Mother F and comic book. <laughs> <Is that, laughs> I don't know what to say. Is that, <laughs> Is that a song? I mean, is it, he, is it a real tune that he changed? Not that I know of. <laughs> it's just on the fly, I think. Um, he's freestyle. <laughs> it's not quite as catchy as Numa Numa, but... <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, All right, let's try one more is here. Is it full just, moon tonight? I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> it's a unique night. But they, they left these how long ago? You know, that's the thing. Might have been a full moon when they recorded these messages. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Hi guys, Sean here, uh, Irish lad in the forums. Just wanted to drop you a quick voice to let you know, really enjoying the Infinite Crisis specials you're doing. Um, wasn't really a DC fan until the kind of countdown started, so really enjoying to hear about the continuity and some of the characters and things. So keep up the good work, um, and I'll hopefully hear from you soon. Bye bye. Now that, that was, was cool. good. Yeah, Thank that was you. nice. It's always good to hear from our international <laughs> audience. It was nice, normal. <laughs> Nothing wrong with the others, but just a little unique. All right, we'll do one more, and then that's it. Okay. It's just, we have so many as a, in a backlog, we need to go through some of these. <laughs> it is a mixed bag, though. You never have Ooh. any idea what you're going to get. <laughs> it's funny. Some people are just crazy. Hi, guys. My name is Frank. I'm Mr. Flashlight on the forum. I'd like to ask you guys a question. Now, I know that hot girls read comics, and, you know, whenever I see a girl at my local comic shop, I always have a tendency to act like an idiot. Yeah, I, I kind of have trouble focusing, so I have to concentrate and make sure that I don't do anything foolish or act like a troll, you know, unless the girl happens to like trolls. Well, in fact, if she were a shut-in and I'm a troll, then we could start dating, and that would be perfect, because... <laughs> Trolls and shut-ins just naturally go together. <laughs> but then again, she could have some type of anti-troll agenda. And I hate people with anti-troll agendas. So, so what am I saying? Uh, just stop calling me at work, okay? Bye. <laughs> okay, that's three now. All right. <laughs> that's three out of four. Thank you, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> what was his question? I have no idea. I don't know. I don't think he had a question. No. That sucks. But we thank Frank and Brad oh, yeah. for sponsoring yeah. episodes. Right. They're having fun down there in Texas. Yeah, apparently there's something in the water. And maybe some trolls under bridges. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. I think we're going to wrap it up on that one. <laughs> 
be a little shorted tonight. Uh, a reminder that this episode was sponsored by Drawer Boxes at CollectionDrawer.com. If you want to get some of the finest boxes for storing all your comics, uh, you can go there. If you don't believe us and you don't want to take our word for it, go on the forum and talk to John Mayo. He'll set you straight. John uh, heard of Drawer Boxes before. He heard of this show, and he met the guy in San Diego, and he ended up buying so many boxes that the guy hired a private shipping company to to drive a truck from Colorado to John's place in Texas. He's in Texas, right? Wow. To personally, you know, to deliver his entire box, entire truckload of, of boxes. <laughs> so <laughs> That must have been one heck John, of a delivery. <laughs> if you need some convincing, just talk to John. I know. I mean, cause those bo- you mean you have yeah. a, those are big boxes heavy. that they come in. It's heavy. Heavy big boxes. Can you imagine Whoa. what's five in a box? A hundred what are you? 180. 180? Yeah. That's a lot of boxes. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, you ain't kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, God, I hope you put them in the garage. <laughs> All right. Um if you want to send us an email, it's comicgeekspeak at gmail dot com. If you want to send us a voicemail, it's two zero six eight 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 four eight zero five if you want to leave leave us a a mother f and e a voicemail <laughs> and uh if you want to visit our website it's www.comicgeekspeak.com and thanks to the guys at upallnightgaming.com for hosting our website and we ask you if you're a fan of the show and you want to pay us back just a little bit please go to vote for us at podcast alley it's comicgeekspeak.com slash vote uh, and it only takes about 30 seconds and uh, as usual we're brought to you in conjunction with worldfamouscomics.com your spot on the internet for the best comic book and entertainment related columns contests, features, reviews, news resources and more and as always we are uniting the world's mightiest heroes one listener at a time (laughs) 